Hi everyone, this is Joy with Create It With Joy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've made two cards using spotlight stamping. I'm using some Simon Says products um, for the images in the background to highlight some colored spots and some not colored spots. So let's see how I put this card together. So here is Simon Says Stamp Floral Mix Background. It's got some great flowers on it, some great floral images. You could use this in your Misty, but I'm going to turn it upside down and ink it that way. Um, I'm also gonna be using some watercolor paper, and the watercolor paper I'm using is um, Ranger's watercolor paper. The ink I'm using also is from Ranger. It's archival ink in uh, jet black, I believe, and it's very good for watercoloring. It doesn't smear, it doesn't do any of that. So I'm gonna ink this up. I am going to, the side of the watercolor paper I want is the less textured side. I'm gonna put that side down on the ink, use a scratch piece of paper and rub really good all over back so I can get a good transferred image. And as you can see, it worked perfect. I'm also going to be doing another one, so I cleaned it off. I'm only inking up the side because I only want a portion of it, which, and you could trim it off later, um, but I had something different in mind and I ended up changing the way the card went. So again, the less textured side down, but that is a personal choice. So if you want to have more texture, go for it. Laying it down using a scratch piece of paper and rubbing all over it really good to get a good impression. And then you also don't have inky hands. See how good that turned out. So now I'm, I'm using Pink and Main's Stitched Circle Die, but any st circle dies would work great. And I am choosing spots because I want three spots that on this particular background will not be colored and the rest of the image will be colored. So I'm just laying it out to see what I think of the sizes of the circles. So what I'm gonna be using is some masking paper. Um, I use masking paper from Simon Says Stamp and I'm gonna cut these circles out and I took a picture so I know where I want these circles to go when I'm done cutting them out of masking paper. I realize I needed a bigger piece. <laughs> but any masking paper would do. I mean, you could use the full, the sticky note background, they're full sticky on the back of the sticky note. Um, you could use that too and that would work just fine. So I'm gonna line those up and run that through my die cut machine and then I'm going to adhere these um, down because these are the spots I do not want colored. I'm going to be coloring the rest of this image. And I, I started coloring this image and realized my camera wasn't on, but I did get a good amount of coloring in. So sticking this down, make sure the edges are down really good. Um, we're gonna be doing a little bit of water coloring, so you have to be careful with how much water you're putting down, obviously, because this paper is not waterproofed. So the so I am using something different. I have never used these before. I am using Tim Holtz Distress Markers. Um, and I absolutely love them. So the colors that I'm using are up on the screen. Cracked Pistachio, Worn Lipstick, Carved Pumpkin, Squeezed Lemonade, Dried Marigold. So what I was doing, this is the first panel that I colored. And I was laying down water first, then adding some color, and then blending it out. So each image mostly has just one color because you get that shadow effect and the lighter effect just by blending it out with water. Again, you guys, I am so sorry for my bird. She is really excited right now. And normally I voice over in the morning and today it just didn't happen. So anyways, back to the card. Um, what I found out on my second panel was that you do not need to lay down water beforehand. Um, and I almost think it worked better when I laid down the color and then uh, used my water brush pen or a paintbrush, however you want to do it, and then brought the water to it later. So what I've done is I've just sprayed a little bit of water off to the side, and I'm dipping my pen in that way. Usually when I use a water brush pen, I just squeeze it out, but um, I really wanted to control how much water I was putting um, on this card. I have to say that Cracked Pistachio is my favorite, favorite, favorite color of any of Tim Holtz distressed anythings. <laughs> it is, I just, it's such a yummy color. I just can't even get over it. So I'm using that for the leaves, um, worn lipstick, dried marigold, um, carved pumpkin, added a little bit of darker to the sunflower. Um, but basically, like I said, for the most part, it's one color per image. 
because again, you get that light and dark part of your flowers. I also love that when this was dry, it gives you kind of that chalky look that you get from the distress inks, if that makes sense. Um, and I really love how that looked. These were really fun. If you guys have not tried these, you need to try these. I can't even believe I've been missing out on them this whole time and I definitely need to find another card and use them again. But I think they're gorgeous and stunning on these flowers. You can get those nice deep dark areas down inside the flower um, and then it gets softer as you work out towards the tip of the petals. And then you can go back over and add a little bit more if it wasn't quite dark enough. So that's what I was doing there on that flower. So we're gonna finish that up. I'm not gonna show you the whole image because you guys get the idea. I'm dabbing off any extra water that I might have. So now that that's done, I'm gonna peel off the masking paper and you can see where I did not color. Now it kinda looks like a hot mess right now. It doesn't look like super spectacular, but wait till we get the frames on and then we'll be excited. So I'm taking two of those same circle dies, some of the same similar sizes, and I'm cutting out white frames for this card. The next card will have a different, um, it'll have a black frame. So I'm gonna lay this over the images and that top image, it's gonna hang off a little bit and that is totally okay. You just trim off the excess. Just put those together, run that through my die cut machine. Now you could, something you could do on this is you could cut out multiples of those frames and stack them up for dimension. Um, I did not wanna do that. I wanted the sentiments to be the dimension on this card. But again, that's a personal choice and whatever it is you like you can do. So I'm gonna use some liquid glue. Now that my background is also dry, you can take a heat tool to it or you can put it aside to dry. And I'm going to adhere down my circle frames. And I just cut this out of regular white cardstock. Put those in and now you can see it's highlighting that those spots are not colored. And I like that it's reversed from the traditional spotlight stamping. Now I'm gonna take some black cardstock and I'm going to be um, inking up the sentiment. I'm prepping my background with an anti-static tool. And I'm gonna be using Simon Says Stamp Tiny Words and also sentiments from their Sketched Flowers stamp set. And I'm just gonna ink them up both at the same time. I'm gonna be using white embossing powder and making three sentiments for this first card. So making sure they line up straight and it kept sticking to my nail. You know, some of those little stamps are so sticky. So we'll ink that up with clear embossing ink and I am using Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And you can see you've got a great stamped image there. Use some white embossing powder. Um, I am using Ranger's Ultra Fine or Ultra Detailed White Embossing Powder. And I'm gonna make sure my heat tool is nice and heated. And it, when you do that, it really does help your paper from not warping so much. And I kind of start on the back and then go through the front. And then when this is all dry, you can take a cloth or a paper towel and wipe all the powder off of your black cardstock. I'm gonna use my paper trimmer and trim up these sentiments. And I, what I really like about Simon Says Stamp Tiny Word Sentiments, I love how little they are. And to me, it actually makes a bigger statement. I love a big sentiment, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you've got this beautiful background that you don't wanna cover up with a huge sentiment. So putting these little ones on there, um, and they just get right to the point. So I'm gonna pop these up on foam tape. I talked about that earlier, because this is what I wanted to have dimension, but again, you could do this the opposite way. You could have the frames have dimension and the sentiments to be non-dimensional kind of centering that off, you know, offset out of the circle. And this one I'm gonna go, I was gonna go center, but I went a little bit lower and I think it looks great. And then that little bit of black really finishes off this card design. Um, it pops, it looks great. I almost think it brings out the colors of the background. So I'm using um, some liquid pearls and buttercup, mint green and coral. 
on this background and Nuvo crystal drops in sugared almond. Adding a few little drops here and there, just a little bit of scattering, which you kind of can't tell until you're looking up at the card. Like it's like right in front of you, but it looks beautiful. And this was attached to an A2 size card base. Isn't that super pretty, you guys? I think it is stunning. I love how that turned out. Okay, so on for our, our next card. Now I'm taking that circle that we had already cut out for the previous card and I am using the frame part of this circle because I'm gonna do this opposite. Now I want to color inside this circle, not the outside. So this I guess would be maybe a traditional spotlight card because this part's gonna be colored. I'm gonna be using the same colors of, of distress markers. I'm not gonna show the coloring, but that is all done. And I'll show you what it looks like when we take the masking paper off and it is so pretty. So now I'm taking the, the circle dies from Pink and Main, and I'm gonna be cutting out a black frame on this card. So I'm doing a little bit, of, a little bit different, the black frame on this, and that will go around that image. And that makes it pop out. And I was, you'll see that I'm gonna trim this card down very differently when we're done here. What I had in mind, I didn't like once once I stuck that frame on there, I didn't like how it looked. Um, I did something similar, but added some dimension. So using liquid glue, again, make sure your um, cardstock is dry. Now I'm gonna be making my sentiments and I'm gonna be doing it on white paper instead of black paper. I'm not gonna be doing any heat embossing. I am just gonna be using ink. Um, again, I'm using Rangers Archival Ink in Jet Black and it gives it a really nice, pretty crisp image. And then we'll trim up those sentiments. So you can see now I really trimmed down this um, panel and I'm going to pop this up on foam tape. Before it was just gonna be a flat card, so it really does kind of have a similar look to the having a lot of white off to the right side of the card, um, but I decided I wanted this to have some dimension. So using some foam tape, or you could use fun foam, cut a piece of fun foam out and adhere it to the back, and that would give you great dimension as well. So pulling off those pieces, I am gonna line this up a little more to the left of the card, but there's gonna be a frame around the tops, bottom, and sides. Then we're going to adhere the sentiment the larger sentiment up on foam tape, and then the smaller sentiment will be kind of on top of the larger and also using foam tape. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now this image, there, was not a, there wasn't really any green leaves. I think maybe there was one or two partial green leaves. And so when I am going to be using the liquid pearls, I'm using mint green and just a few because I felt like this needed to have a little bit more green to it the way that the first card had a lot of um, images of leaves that we were able to color green. And this is also attached to an A2 size card base. So attaching a little bit of foam tape to the bottom of that, little bit of liquid glue. I think I used a little bit of liquid glue. And adhering that right to the bottom. Yep, here we go. This is a multimedia matte by Ranger. Adhere that down, and I like the way that that looks. And it goes a little bit past the other sentiment towards the right. So now here is the mint green for the liquid pearls, and I'm only gonna be adding it to the colored panel portion of this card. And just a few drops here and there, again, to add some of the green that we're not getting with the floral image because we've only colored a small portion of it. I think both of these cards are stunning and beautiful. I think anyone would like this. This is super easy, you guys. Um, any, you, you can use anything to color with, but I definitely think you need to try these Distress Markers by Tim Holtz. I mean, I really love how they turned out. Super, super pretty. Here's the two cards together side by side. I love them both. I think they are just stunning. 
Thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I appreciate all of your support. Uh, you guys are a blessing to me every day. If you like what you've seen, please thumbs up, subscribe, and please share with all of your crafty friends. Again, I have affiliate links below. It costs you nothing, but it does help me. Thank you again, and I'll be back here really soon. Bye.